Hello everybody, it is currently 11.35 p.m. on Sunday the 4th of April. Dane reads. 2021. I'm currently reading Illuminated Poems by Allen Ginsberg and Eric Drucker. It's a very beautiful book. Um, oh, let's flick into, there we go. A massive woman standing, <laughs> naked woman standing over a fire that's going to singe her pubes and they're sending the army in. I really like this one as well. Uh, but yeah, these are just some of Ginsberg's most well-known poems with um, illustrations and actually it's really nicely done. So uh, this is on course for four out of five. And then after this, I'm going to read The Sentinel by Arthur C. Clarke. Hello, it's me. Um, it's currently Tuesday. I feel absolutely terrible still. Um, it's just still all this stomach stuff going on, all this anxiety stuff. I had a really bad panic attack last night, which kind of laid me low. I actually had uh, my boss who I work with. Um, she had to like talk me down from it. Now I'm noticing I can't breathe properly, but that's probably just because I'm knackered because it just took me five minutes to find the camera. Uh, I've been reading The Sentinel by Arthur C. Clarke, it's quite good. There was a story in there which I had already read about like uh, the British heir to the throne sort of sneaks on board a spaceship because he wants to see space and he knows that like, you know, the official monarchy will never let him. So that was quite a good little read. Um, overall it's quite good. I picked up a couple of books from the Tesco Book Exchange as well. Um, I don't think there's actually that much to update you on since last time. I'm not, oh, I finished reading Illuminated Poems by Allen Ginsberg. Uh, oh, it's progression with the house that I looked at, I need to figure out how much I'm going to offer them. Uh, so I'm probably going to offer them, uh, make an offer tomorrow. My, I can hear my shower making a noise. My shower's starting to spit stuff back up out of the drain and I think it's coming from the toilet. So I think I've got my own horrible anxiety IBS shit coming back up through my shower, which isn't good. I don't really know what's going on, to be honest. I still don't really have, I mean, I've been trying to get into the doctors because I've got an ear infection as well. I get a lot of them um, and I need to get some spray to get rid of the ear infection. I'm also just very like, I don't know if you can see, I'm kind of dizzy, struggling to stand up a bit of like, yeah. And this is me when I'm okay, like, Oh, it's not good. It's been getting worse and worse and worse and I my anxiety has only ever been this bad once before and I had a nervous breakdown then uh, and that was when I first got diagnosed. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but um, I'm doing my best and as I say, I'm currently reading The Sentinel. Yeah. Hello, it is Wednesday, whatever day Wednesday is. Uh, I'm in here just chilling with Biggie at the moment. He's over on a little, the little stool. Uh, what have I been doing? I finished reading, um, what's it? Oh God! I finished reading The Inner Landscape by Mervyn Peake, J.G. Ballard and Brian W. Aldiss. Um, so these are a bunch of, sort of pretty well-known science fiction, speculative fiction authors. Ballard, I've read a few books by before and really enjoy his stuff, so that's really why I picked this up. Although I have heard, you know, good things about Peake and Aldiss. Peak story was pretty good. There was a hyena in it that kept on calling everybody a knobhead, which was great. Uh, although he did use a lot of passive voice, which was starting to drive drive me crazy by the end of it. But yeah, three novellas. Um, I would argue Ballard's one is more of a short story than a novella. I mean, this is like 185 pages or something. 190 pages for three stories. But hey, it was pretty good. I would give this a four out of five. Uh, oh, definitely Ballard is like, I've got all of his books on my uh, wish list. Peak and Aldous, I would definitely read them again. So that's good. And I am now, uh, I've just started reading Cow on a Hot Tin Roof by Tennessee Williams, which I picked up from the Tesco Book Exchange. And uh, yeah, it's, I mean, I've just read the intro, so I can't really tell you anything about the play. Although it won a Pulitzer, so it's got to be pretty good, right? Um, what else is new? I went to the doctor today. Well, I didn't go to the doctors, but I managed to get a phone call with them. Uh, basically, I went to bed at a reasonable time last night, but then I woke up at like 6 a.m. with a really bad earache because I've got an ear infection. But uh, the doctor gave me some spray to fix that, and he's also increased my uh, medication, my uh, citalopram, which is like an antidepressant, anti-anxiety drug. So hopefully that will help. I spent most of today at Wickham Art Centre, so. Um, well, we had a meeting, it, very ironically, we had a meeting about workload, and I'm just there like, you know, my workload would be a lot easier if we didn't have this meeting. But I did have my laptop, so I was doing stuff during that, so I guess it wasn't too bad. Um, and then, yeah, um, a couple of my colleagues have been working on the cafe space there, turning it into an art gallery, ready for when we reopen, which is really cool, really nice to see some of the art there. 
Uh, there's a local artist who, um, I had to check whether I was wearing the t-shirt. She designed one of the t-shirts for this t-shirt campaign we did. Um, but her style is very much like, it looks like an adult colouring book. But she's got this uh, new piece that's on display and it's a Frida Kahlo and it's just, ah, oh, it looks great. I really like it. Um, but it's like 120 quid so I'm not going to buy it. Oh, I put in an offer for a house today, so I'm waiting to hear back from that. I'll probably hear back in the next couple of days. Uh, it's kind of scary because, like, money, just, I don't know. Right, so I watched Ariel Bissett, because uh, she's bought a house recently, and she did a video about, like, how much buying a house costs, and her entire house, well, it, it came to, basically, the house that I'm, the properties I'm looking at around here, I would say are about five times as expensive as what she paid and her house is massive and like I'm looking at like five times that for a, a place with like four rooms or whatever but hey ho that's the joys of living in Canada I suppose but yeah so I will find out about that soon and then I can look into like mortgages and stuff I did my tax return today it's been a busy day really uh, yeah so that's where we're at and in a little bit I'm gonna head through into bedroom and we're gonna listen to some vinyls, some classical music, possibly this one. I'm feeling this one, lollipops from Vienna, an assortment of delectable dances from old Vienna with the Boskowski ensemble. Willy Boskowski, violin and director. It's unfortunate it's called Willy, isn't it? Hello everybody, it's been a good few days. It's currently Saturday the 10th of April at 6.25 p.m. Uh, I'm doing a little bit better. Uh, no stomach aches today, although I did wake up with a backache, although maybe I just slept funny, who knows. Uh, but I've been trying to eat a, a gluten-free diet as well, just in case that helps. Although, I don't know, pretty sure that all the stomach problems have been related to my anxiety, but hey-ho. I'm hopefully buying a house. I've had an offer accepted, so I just need to sort out my mortgage and my solicitor. Uh, which I'm gonna try and do. Well, I can try and ring the mortgage people tomorrow. I've got an offer in principle, which basically means they've said, yes, we'll lend you the money as long as, you know, all goes well. So they just need more details from me before they can offer like a formal, uh, formal mortgage offer. But that'd be nice, because my house is a fucking shithole, man. Like, it was pretty bad when I came in here, and like, there's like a fuse box up there, for example, that's just open to the kitchen, which shouldn't happen. Uh, the toilets next to the kitchen, which apparently theoretically there's supposed to be two doors between them uh, That's what I've heard anyway, but um, my landlord never fixes anything So my washing machine doesn't work at the moment my plumbing isn't working properly So I've got like literally sewage bubbling up in my shower and outside as well So I've got some stuff to like try and clean the drains, but in the meantime, yeah toilet doesn't flush properly like, to be fair, I mean, I never I never really liked this place from when I moved in, so I've never really looked after it. Um, but, yeah. So hopefully I can get my own place, and this place that, that I made the offer on, uh, it's a lot nicer, basically. I would have a back garden where I can grow some stuff, hopefully get some rescue chickens. You sort of go in through the back garden, you go into this kitchen, which is a lot bigger than my current kitchen, although it is in dire need of modernization. And then through the other side, you've got this little, uh, like, little tiny living room, um, which would be nice for a sofa and a TV and a little reading nook. And then a really nice bathroom next to it. And then back in the kitchen, you go up this spiral staircase, and that takes you up to the uh, first floor, which has got it's got a separate bedroom, and then it's got like a big long open plan bit, which would hopefully be becoming my office. So I guess I'll keep you updated on that over the next few weeks. But that's one of the reasons why I've been so stressed. And also why this weekend I just need to work constantly. Um, in fact, the only reason I'm filming is because I found a way to make filming a part of my work schedule. Uh, so yeah, I can just squeeze in a little bit of extra work while I'm editing, basically. Uh, but anyway, I'm still reading I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. I'm like 10 pages off the head now. Pretty harrowing, but very well written, and you can obviously tell, tell that she's a poet. And, okay, so here it is. Um, what was I going to say with the and there? I don't know, just that it's very good. Uh, next up, I'm going to read Chatterton, The Black Death by Charles Reznikov. Um, and this is actually, uh, so this is public domain stuff. Uh, I think it's three plays in this. Uh, and Reznikov wrote this book called Holocaust, which is like blackout poetry um, based on Nazi transcriptions, basically. So I'm really interested in reading some more of Reznikov's work. So I need to haul this in a second and uh, do a, a cheeky wrap up as well. So that's where I am at. Lots of work and housework. We're listening to Meatloaf. 
and I made us delicious Buddha bowls. They look amazing. They do, mine's got jalapenos. Greetings, it is currently 10.30 p.m. on Sunday the 11th of April. Uh, I had a bit of a stomach ache today, so I did a lot of sleeping, but I've also been quite productive, done quite a bit of work, so that's good. Uh, not done too much editing, I've been working on next week's radio show, so there is that. Uh, hopefully some more booktube videos coming soon, because at the time of filming this, I think I've only posted one or two in the last week. I finished reading Chatterton, The Black Death, and what was the third one called again? Meriwether Lewis, um, by Charles Resnikoff. This is really interesting actually, because this is like, almost like a facsimile edition. Basically it went out of copyright, and they've literally scanned the book in, including like these weird end pages that they've you know, taking the time to do, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it was all right, three plays. They're all very short, um, but there was some good stuff in there. Probably like 3.5, maybe a four out of five. And then I have been reading The Best of Sci-Fi, 17 Times Infinity, great science fiction by Isaac Asimov, Ray Bradbury, Howard Fast, Theodore Sturgeon, Rudyard Kipling, E.M. Forster, Frederick Pohl, and others, edited by Groff Conklin. Groff Conklin is the man with the incredible name. He's actually quite well known as being a sci-fi editor as well. Have been really enjoying this so far. Uh, what am I on at the moment? AWF Unlimited, and this is by Frank Herbert, June, June man. So, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying this joining this collection so far. It's kind of interesting because I'm over halfway through and I'm only up to Herbert uh, alphabetically by surname. And Kipling has two in this. He's the only author who has two and I don't know why. But uh, yeah, really enjoyable stuff and it's cool to see some like really early sci-fi by like the likes of E.M. Forster. So yeah, probably on track for a four out of five. So I think that's pretty much it. I made Buddha bowls earlier, which is like um a, sort of a big bowl of food basically lots of different stuff so there was what did we have in it we had um, quinoa sh shredded red cabbage grated carrot roasted sweet potatoes roasted chickpeas I had some jalapenos in mine some hummus uh, and some kale and I think that was the lot and then some like balsamic vinegar dressing so it's been really delicious here we go here is the remnants of my Buddha bowl so this is after like two attacks on it and uh, there's still quite a lot left, as you can see. Yeah, really delicious stuff. I'm just going to take this out. And really healthy as well. So I think that pretty much brings us up to date. Uh, I'm just currently sitting on the sofa with Biggie again because this stomach is kind of gone now. This stomach ache, to be fair, but um, I don't really know the cause of it because it came on after eating the butter bowl. But it's like, well, that was loads of really healthy stuff. I think I just get stomach aches when I eat, so it's kind of a pain. Now Mark Watney, he was a botanist. Sometimes you need a space button, and uh, this I just thought was a fascinating little paragraph. Hello fine people of the internet, it is 4.50pm uh, on 14th of April, uh, it is a Wednesday. 14th of April is Ruination Day, there's a great song by Gillian Welsh, in fact her entire album, The Revelator, is kind of based on Ruination Day. Basically April the 14th is the day the Titanic sank, although it struck the uh, iceberg on the 13th, it's the day Lincoln got shot and uh, I think there was a massacre as well. Lots of like important stuff in US history basically. Um, so definitely check out uh, April the 14th part one and Time the Revelator part two by Gillian Welsh. So what is new with me? Well, yesterday was a bit of a disaster. Um, I've been having some problems with my plumbing and it culminated in literal sewage was coming up out of my shower. Um, my landlord hasn't been answering his phone so I've had to pay for it myself for an emergency plumber. Although the plan is basically I'm just gonna take it out of my rent. Um, although, well, the landlord doesn't know that because I still haven't been able to speak to him. But yeah, the plumber came round today, cleared the drains, and so now my toilet and stuff is flushing. It was literally to the point when the guy upstairs would flush his toilet and it was coming out of my shower. So you can imagine that was pretty bad. Anyway, that's all sorted. The other thing is I'm looking into buying a house. Um, and by the time you're watching this, because I'm super far behind with all my vlogs, hopefully I'll be a lot closer. Uh, and that's part of the reason as well. I just need to get out of this place. But um, yeah, I've made an offer for someone that's been accepted. So I'm looking into mortgages and my solicitors and stuff. And at the moment, nobody will offer me a mortgage. Basically only some places are doing 5% mortgages and the only one, and they all like calculate based on the last three years of income. And that includes my first year when I went freelance. So there's not as much money in there. So it drags me down. So uh, Santander is the only one that does it over the last year or the last two years. Um, so I can get a mortgage from them, but they're not doing 5% mortgages at the moment. Although they're supposed to be launching them in April. So the theory is hopefully I'm going to get a 5% mortgage with Santander. If not, I can do a 10% mortgage, but then my money is like really tight to the point at which it's eating into my tax money 
to, would, to put the deposit down and to pay the solicitor's fees, not counting all of the moving fees and all of that stuff, plus having to pay you know, my mortgage back as my monthly rent. So hopefully we can get a 5% one. I mean, I can go up to like 8%, it's just 10% kills me, so a bit of a pisser. Anyway, as for what I've been reading, uh, I read, I finished reading 17 Times Infinity by Groff Conklin, so, Groff Conklin or Groff Cronklin, I don't know, uh, which is a collection of sci-fi stories, so that was pretty good, 4 out of 5 for that. Uh, then I read, uh, what's it called? The Lost Continent by Bill Bryson, which is like his travels around small town America. It was written in 1989, so there were some really interesting points in it. Like he was talking about how the president of the United States was a joke because it was Ronald Reagan. And he was talking about it being a joke that this like entertainment star became a president. And then at one point he made a, he made a throwaway line to, uh, there's this new developer in New York who's buying too many properties and naming them after him. So there are all these like Trump Towers and stuff. And it's kind of like, God, if only you could have seen what was coming, you know? Uh, but yeah, that was probably a 3.5 out of 5, although a strong one. I actually don't know where the book is at the moment. I think I left it at Susie's because I can't find it in my house. So I'm going to ask her when she finishes work to have a little look around for me. And now I'm, I'm reading uh, uh, The Dasadi Experiment by Frank Herbert, the author of June. So I'm 216 pages in, but it's very, very boring, to be honest. Uh, says, a swirling, vividly complex story set on the most alien and challenging world Frank Herbert has yet created. A brutal prison planet where 850 million beings are confined in 40 square kilometres. But the problem is, as it says, it's vividly complex. I, I wouldn't say it's vivid, it's just complex. And I, because the storyline's not particularly gripping me, I'm finding it quite hard to relate to it. So this is, I, I'm course for just a 3 out of 5 for me. Um, and I'll probably finish it today, because at this point I'm pretty much like just powering through it just to finish it now you know uh, and then next up I got some books from the uh, book exchange at Tesco so I might pick those up soon or I also have Play a Piano by Kurt Vonnegut uh, which is probably going to be my next read so that's where we're at hello everybody Dane here on low battery it is currently 11.32 on Friday the 16th of April I'm still reading Play a Piano by Kurt Vonnegut I'm about 40 pages from the end so I will probably finish that bad boy off today uh, next up, I'm going to read uh, The Roving Mind by Isaac Asimov, which has got a collection of his like, non-fiction essays and stuff in it. My tweet deck is pinging at me, so we'll see if this microphone picks it up. I'm not too sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, I started reading the, the, the Roving Mind as a bedtime book, um, but it's enjoyable, so I'm just going to read it as my main read. It's all like non-fiction essays about various uh, sciencey bits. Uh, and then I also finished reading How Not to Die by Dr. Michael Gregor, MD. I'm going to show this to you because it's a beast. So, oh, I've gone blurry now. Hello, hello. So this is How Not to Die. Uh, it's based on the results of the China study, which is one of the largest global uh, studies into population health, which basically found that a whole food plant-based diet is the best diet to follow if you want to not die. And uh, Gregor basically bit breaks down everything. So we've got like how not to die from heart disease, which is the US's biggest killer. Answer, eat less meat. Uh, how not to die from infections. Eat less meat. How not to die from digestive cancers. Eat less meat. How not to die from kidney disease. Eat less meat. So you're kind of getting the uh, gist here. I mean, I'm already vegan, so you know. But I picked up a load of stuff like, um, one of the good, good tips actually is when you're in the produce aisle, uh, the more coloured something is, the better it is. So red onions are better than white onions. Um, red grapes are better than green grapes. Uh, fucking cabbage, red cabbage is better than white cabbage, etc., etc. So that kind of helps you just try and get as much colour into your, your meals as possible and eat a lot of whole food and grains. I've been eating a lot healthier since this and actually been recently been going gluten-free as well because my dad is celiac and can't eat gluten and I have a lot of stomach problems. So I'm trying to see whether that helps. And fingers crossed so far, my anxiety and my stomach have both been a lot better. Although I still generally wake up with a stomach ache and get a lot of shakes and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, How Not To Die, really good, four out of five. Uh, Play a Piano is probably on for a four out of five as well. It's kind of interesting because it's uh, Vonnegut's first novel and um, there's a lot of stuff in it about technology and automation and all of that stuff which is obviously very, very relevant to the lives we live today. STOP PINGING AT ME! What else? Oh yeah, I also read It's a Punderful Life, a fun collection of puns and wordplay by Gemma Coral. I just picked this up from the charity shop book exchange. It took me like five, ten minutes to read it but it was quite enjoyable. So we have like a nervous tick, a blunt pencil. So the pencil's being like, yeah actually that outfit does make you look pretty fat. Uh, this is probably 4 out of 5, but again, it's kind of a novelty book, really, but I did enjoy it. So my next bedtime book is going to be Grimm's Fairy Tales by Philip Pullman. Um, Philip Pullman is one of my favourite authors, but I just really, I'm not into fairy tales, what, what, whatever. 
So I tried starting to read this before and I'm just like, this is so dull, it's just fairy tales and fairy tales bore the pants off me. So that's my current bedtime read. Um, and yeah, that's where we're at. I was at the art centre yesterday, we were out in the garden, um, just cleaning all of that basically because tomorrow we've got uh, our relaunch event, so we've got live music by a musician called Clara, which I'm very excited about, and then an open mic at the end. I'm doing sound, so I'll be sitting down behind the sound desk all day. I'm also still not drinking or smoking, I actually hit three, week, uh, three months with that cigarette yesterday or the day before and not drinking wise I'm on it six seven months something like that since the end of October I think was the last time I drank so uh, that's where we're at and uh, yeah I'm just gonna crack on with things I'm surprised my camera's still going to be honest that's good I don't know where all my spare batteries have gone uh, I don't have much work on at the moment uh, the main art center thing I have is the website um, but basically I'm kind of stuck with it so I've just handed it off to some other people and they can worry about it so uh, I do have some other bits and bobs to do and I'm gonna be doing lots of filming and editing today as well um, just because I have the time to for once so uh, and also to be fair I am working at the art center from 10 till 6 tomorrow which on a Saturday so uh, there's that so that's where I am at Hello people of the internet, it is Sunday the 18th of April, about 10 past 7 in the evening. Uh, right, okay, so where to start? I guess we'll start with yesterday. Yesterday was uh, our relaunch party at Wickham Arts Centre. So we had a talented local singer-songwriter and performer called Clara come along. And she played a couple of sets, which was great. She had a looper pedal and stuff, a few people joining her, which was also very cool. Uh, and then an open mic after that as well. So I helped set up, take all the tables out. Uh, did all the sound as well, uh, which was a lot of fun, but also very tiring. I think by the end of the day, I'd done ten and a half miles of walking, and my muscles are super sore today. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed the event. I came back here afterwards because Susie was here, and uh, we had the talk. So uh, we're no, we're now no longer in a relationship. Life update for you. Um, I don't really want to make too big a deal of it. It's fine. We just sort of, I suppose, grew apart and are doing our, are going our separate ways. We might still be doing our combined YouTube channel, Lord Literature and Madam Media, I'm not too sure. I don't really have the time, to be honest. Like Everything is, is all work, work, work at the moment. I'm still hopefully purchasing a property and moving house over the next few months. So um, I'm currently at the stage where I've had an offer accepted, um, sorting out mortgages and stuff, and I'm just about gonna be able to get a mortgage, I think, but I have to, basically it's gonna cost me like 20 grand, which just wipes out all of my savings which again puts a lot of pressure on me now to be making money and to uh, be profitable. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of overtime, but also because I do, um, I have my eBay store, so um, I sell books and vinyls and stuff on that, and so I do that generally while I'm editing, so I'm gonna be editing a lot of videos to be putting a lot more stuff and making sure that's all up to date, uh, and then potentially doing a little bit of writing for some clients while editing, which is quite fun and something a little bit different as well. So that's life updates and where we're at and stuff. As I say, I'm so sore. Like, I feel my, my elbows here, like they've gone. They've totally gone. <laughs> uh, but my legs are okay, which I guess is because of all the heavy lifting from lifting up like PA systems and moving tables and stuff. So uh, at the moment, I'm currently watching uh, Gab Smolders play uh, Twilight Princess, the Legend of Zelda game. Uh, she's also in a relationship with uh, Jack Septicai, so I watch both of them. I actually came across her for a, uh, I was uh, I've been recently rewatching a lot of, well, rewatching isn't the word. I've been watching a lot of let's plays of games that I completed or was interested in in the, in the past, you know. So I discovered her because she did a let's play of Dino Crisis. Uh, and then I was going to watch someone else do Twilight Princess because I never completed it. And now that she's doing it, I can just watch her. So uh, I'm going to crack on with that. Uh, I might watch Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace later as well. Because um, I read the uh, play of it, or the, not the... It was uh, Ian Dershow, uh, William Shakespeare's sort of parody. So he does these stories. He does like Shakespearean play versions of popular movies. He's also done much ado about Mean Girls, which I'm looking forward to. But he, yeah, so uh, I might watch that later on. Otherwise, I also have a Let's Play of The Witcher by Christopher Odd to be watching. So there's that. Uh, and basically, I've been stacking up a load of vinyls because that was a thing that me and Susie used to do. We'd, be, we'd sit there and listen to vinyls together. So now I can just listen to my <laughs> vinyls without having to wait. So I can just go through my uh, vinyls here. And again, I'm listening to them, deciding whether I want to keep them or not. My collection's actually getting pretty big. I have um, a, a singles box that's full. So luckily I have a second one 
that I can start to spill over into if I get any more singles. So we will see. Reading wise, uh, I have, what did I finish reading last? I finished reading uh, Ghost Set of Watchmen by Harper Lee. I actually thought it was all right. I gave it like a 3.5 out of five. Um, I, I know there's a lot of controversy around whether Harper Lee actually even wanted it to be published and there are like uh, rumors that she was kind of manipulating, taking advantage of, which if that's true, it sucks. But as a book in its own right, and again, if you try not to compare it too much to To Kill a Mockingbird, it was pretty good. It's just that To Kill a Mockingbird is so good that everyone hates on Ghost Set of Watchmen because of it. Um, you know, I think if if uh, only Ghost Set of Watchmen had been published, people would have potentially enjoyed it. They just wouldn't necessarily have picked it up because they wouldn't have heard of it, you know? So I've read that, and now I'm reading Uncommon Type by Tom Hanks, which is his uh, short story collection. And so far, it's okay as well. Probably more important Port course for a four out of five days. Uh, which I imagine is due to him working with a very good editor. But um, yeah, it's I, right. and in that, like, it's a short story collection and the concept is that all the stories are linked together. They all feature a typewriter uh, to some extent. So I'm only on the second story, um, but so far, so good. So that's where I am and what I'm up to. I am gonna love you and leave you now. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.